Aesthetic Face Blend is very similar to the Face Blend, but it has additional functionality and additional capability. Now, when we take a look at our Aesthetic Face Blend, you'll notice the selections are the same as far as Chain Face 1, 2, and as you can see, we have various options, orientation, we have rolling ball, spine curve, or a vector. I've talked about rolling ball and spine curve. They work exactly the same as uh, they do in face blend. Now, I haven't really talked about vector, and this is something I may choose to talk about at a later date. We also have tangent line. How is our tangent line controlled? Basically, how big is the pipe? I have by radius or by cord length. Now, radius is actually a ball radius. How, how big is the ball going in there? And by cord length is, think of it as a pipe. If I were to run a pipe down the um, center of this, or this, the edges where these two intersect, then that would be the size of that pipe, roughly. So here, I'm going to use cord length, and this is gonna give me a center radius, and it's also gonna give me a cord length handle. If I pull on the cord length handle you'll notice the size increases. What you'll also see here is I have a center radius value and it's currently set to 5. If I change this to 25 you'll see that that begins to flatten out. So if you have a homologation need meaning you have a minimum radius required you can use this option to make sure that whatever radius is applied it'll know it, the minimum radius available at the center is going to be 25 so it'll be 25 and larger. You also have an option to go with a row value and the row value as you can see default is 0 0.6 you can go 0 0.5, 0 0.4 if you want it flatter you want it sharper you go up to 0 0.7 so now you're no longer controlling the actual radius value of the center but the shape value. Some of the other things that you can do is you have various law types. So if I wanted a linear law, I'll have this handle at either end. So now I can make one end larger and the other end smaller. And I have a linear transition as I go across. I also have cubic. So this gives me a nice S-shaped transition. To linear multi transition is one of those where it's very complex where I can specify a point along the spine and I'll specify another point along the spine and as you can see at every point location I have the ability to control the size of that radius thing and then the other thing that I can do if I want to tweak this is I can move the actual location of that point as well along that theoretical corner. So this multi-transition is very powerful. I'll just go back to linear for something a little quicker, a little faster, a little prettier. Other options that I have within the aesthetic face blend, if I look under constraint. Now, by default, let me shrink this. There we go. By default, we have a G1 constraint. And what I want to do is I want to do a minimum radius check. And my and I and this is another place. This doesn't actually force a minimum radius. This just verifies that I don't go below a certain minimum radius. Maybe that's 5.5 in a lot of cases. That's what it is. You'll notice down here, it tells me minimum radius is satisfied, meaning that everything is fine. But as I begin to change my flow for my tangent chain, you'll notice I have G1. So on that face, it is G, G0. I have G1. You'll see it's just hard edge. This is signifying the type of continuity that I have you'll see the little circle meaning that that touches down here at the tangent I have this circle with a little line above it 
one line indicates tangency. As soon as I change this to tangent, you'll notice that now I have a tangent a line indicating tangency. I also can go G2, which is my curvature, and I'll do that and you'll notice I have ind independent control on either side. As well as G3. So if you're doing something and it requires flow, maybe you're doing an exterior body panel where flow is absolutely critical, you can just specify the flow here and all is well. You'll also notice that my minimum value check 5.5 is saying minimum radius is satisfied. If I do something that uh, I want to verify, let's say a radius that's much larger, we'll go up to 55 for instance. This will throw up a warning, a minimum radius was not set at, uh, 50, it is achieved at 16.1. So if you go above that, the minimum radius check will tell you what your value is allowable. The trim options are the same as before. So you have your various trim options really hasn't changed. There's a couple of little things in there which we may choose to talk about at a later date. Settings. This is the degree of my U and V directions of my blend. What I want you to notice is if I reduce my face chain complexity, I also have the ability to comfortably reduce my U and V radii. You'll notice I can only go so far. If I up this and I go back to flow, you'll notice that it jumps up. This value jumps back up. So you do have a little control as far as what the surface is doing, but in this case, at a minimum, I need an 8 in a U and a 2 in the V. This is the degree or how many control points are going to be created. You have relative and absolute. Um, again, it's it's how those how that math is determined. If I go to absolute, this is going to tell me, hey, wait a minute, um, this is this is not um, using any sort of tolerant modeling. It's going to an absolute value, so it tightens it down a little bit. We'll go to relative because in most cases that's perfectly acceptable. I also have other options in here. I can say output. I want a Bezier. And what will end up happening is all of the independent patches internally that are created by the NURBS surface are now split. And each one of those internal patches is being shown by saying Bezier. So this is going to show me where each, this is a Bezier surface, this is a Bezier surface, and so on. If I increase the math on this I'm saying hey give me a little bit more math I'm creating more complex surfaces but I have fewer patches as you can see some places that you work will require that you use uh, minimum degree settings and maximum degree settings but in order to achieve flow you do need a minimum degree setting of 8 I can generate a non-associative center line, something that I can use as a reference for later on. I'm going to turn off Bezier because um, in this instance it's not going to give me what I want. And with my trim options all set, let's go here to my trim options, I'm going to trim everything. I'm going to sew all my faces and select OK. And as you can see, I get a nice aesthetic blend to those two input faces. So whereas face blend gives you a lot more options, pretty much most of those options are going to be tangent, tangential based. Um, you may end up with some surface dis this uh, regularities, irregularities along those edges if you're looking for true G2 and G3. Face blend cannot do G3. Aesthetic face blend can. Um, mind you, the aesthetic face blend has fewer options but it's still exceptionally powerful. It grants you a stylistic uh, blend between those two surfaces and you do not necessarily need to create, and in fact, not necessarily, you cannot create tangent curves to control how this blend flows from one to the other. Whereas with a face blend, I can specify those tangent curves.